Hey guys, so today I filmed this super easy date night look using the Tardiest Pro Palette. It is my new favorite palette. This week I declared it Tardiest Pro Palette Week. So every look I do this week will be using this beauty right here. If you guys want to see how to get this look, then just keep watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Alright guys, so I'm going to start with the Becca Ever Matte Primer. This just makes sure that the pores are filled that I start with a clean slate and it keeps my skin matte throughout the day. That way I don't have oil coming through from the foundation or anything like that. This is one of my favorite primers. Then I'm going to go in with my top foundation right now which is the Fit Me by Maybelline. It's matte and poreless. It is $5 at the drugstore and it lasts all day. It's super buildable without looking cakey. This stuff is amazing. Um, and I'm just going to use my Morphe buffing brush and what I like to do is press it into the skin and then buff it outwards that way I make sure that I'm covering everything that I like to cover I do have some acne scars and things like that so if I really push push that into the skin it kind of helps to camouflage that a little bit as well <laughs> Better Skin Concealer by Maybelline. This is in the shade light. And I'm totally random with this in this video. Sometimes I'm more precise, but honestly, as long as you get it in the areas that you need the coverage, once you go to blend it out, everything works out fine. So I'm super sloppy with it in this one, but I um, always put it underneath my eyes just to um, hide the darkness. And then I put a little down my nose, my forehead on top of my cupid's bow and my chin just to make sure that everything is nice and even and that since I'm putting light underneath my eyes I want to also balance that out through the rest of my face. So then I'm going to just take my damp Real Techniques blending sponge and make sure that that's all blended out. You definitely want to pick up any excess product so I love this sponge because it makes sure that it picks up anything that is just way too much on the skin. It makes sure that it doesn't get cakey. It blends it out beauty beautifully, so that's why I don't worry too much about being precise with my concealer as long as it's in the areas that I'm trying to get it in. This sponge really does do a great job. blended out I'm going to go with my airspun loose translucent powder this is one of my favorite powders I've been using it a lot lately but I'm just going to use that to bake and set the concealer in all the places wherever I put concealer I'm going to leave that just for a few minutes just so it stays nice and bright but it doesn't crease throughout the day I'm going to take my Kat Von D shade and light palette and I'm going in with the first two shades in the palette just to contour and really Make sure that my cheekbones kind of stand out and everything looks a little skinnier. Um, I usually don't contour a whole lot, but today I decided to just because the look was a little bit more dramatic. But I'm using the shades in the palette Subconscious and Shadow Play, and I just mixed the two, carved out my cheekbones, um, put it on around the top of my forehead, down the bridge of my nose. And then I'm just going to put it underneath the chin and the jawline just to make that a little bit more pronounced. I have really prominent facial features so I don't ever go too crazy on the contour because I can look drag queen, drag queen real quick. Then I'm just going to take a clean um, brush and just brush all the powder away and kind of blend out the contour that I just did because I don't like super harsh contour lines. It's just not really something I ever go for. But I'm going to blend all that out and then I'm going to take that airspun powder and just kind of trace underneath the jawline in case any of that contour powder fell down on my jawbone. I hate when I contour and then I notice when I get in the car that I have like uh, contour powder down on that jawbone because it makes it look very muddy. 
So I always try to clean that up a little bit and it also makes the contour a little bit more sharp. Then I'm just gonna take my Anastasia Brow Definer Pencil in the shade Soft Brown. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna do a whole, a, make sure you guys can see what I do with my brows. Just a little disclaimer, I shaved off half of my left eyebrow about a month ago when I was dermaplaning my face. And so they are not even at all. They are getting there, but they definitely um, are not symmetrical. And you will see that, but I tried to make them as even as possible. But I also don't draw out my eyebrows or draw on my eyebrows or carve them out really sharply. I kind of just follow whatever they're naturally doing. I feel like it just looks better on my face. Sometimes if I'm being a little bit more dramatic, I'll actually carve them out and do all that stuff. But I usually just like to keep it pretty natural with the brows. I just kind of use like upward flicking motions at the front of the brow because I don't want that to be too harsh or dark. And I feel like it looks more natural if I'm not like drawing it on. So I just always flick upwards just to give it like a more gradient look from the front of the brow to the back of the brow or the end of the brow. And then I'm just going to follow it with the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel just to lock those babies in there. Make sure they're not acting all crazy throughout the day. No, no, no. Then I just went into the TARDIS. I don't know if it's TARDIS or TARDIS. I'm going to say TARDIS. But my intro, I think I said TARDIS, but you know what I mean. So I'm going to take my TARDIS palette and I just grabbed the shade Classic just to set that concealer that I put on my, um, my eyelids before I go in. Then I took the shade Innocent from the palette and I'm just using that as my transition shade. And I'm just going to really show that I'm blend that all out before I go in with the darker colors. And then I took a smaller blending brush and went in with the shade Whimsy. And I'm just going to really just focus all this on the outer um, V and in the crease. I don't want to drag it too far in. Then I took a really small brush and went in with the shade Smoked. It's more of a dark brown, blackish color. And I just traced out that V and really pushed it about halfway into the crease. And then I'm gonna take a blending brush and just work all that in. And I do this several times and build up the color that I want. Um, so it definitely takes a little bit to get it because I like my, if I'm doing a really dark look, I want the outer V and some of the crease to be really dark just for dramatics. But then I'm going to take the Too Faced Glitter um, Glue. I'm just going to put that on before I use the shade Erethral, I think it is, from the palette. Just to make sure that it looks really glittery. Then I took the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow, took a small blending brush, and I used that for my eyeliner. And you can see that I just kind of smoked that out. It's not precise. I didn't want a really harsh, defined eyeliner with this look, so I just went with a more blended look. I popped on my Ardell Wispies, my favorite lashes of all times. I just popped those on and did that off camera. Then I went in with my Makeup Revolution um, Matte Blush in the shade Nude. You can grab that at Ulta for, I think it's maybe $5. And take the e.l.f. highlighter, it's called Blush Gems, and I'm just going to put that on top of my cheekbones. And then you'll notice I didn't think it was bright enough, so I went in with my Becca Cosmetics um, highlighter in Champagne Pop just to go over that a little bit. Then I'm gonna smoke out my bottom lash line and I use the colors Whimsy and Smoked. 
I did that very lightly and I make sure I blend it really well. I don't want any harsh lines and I definitely don't want to drag that down too far because when you use dark colors like a black or a dark brown, you can look like a raccoon real quick. So make sure you blend and don't drag it down too far. Then I'm going to go in with the Revlon Color Stay Lip Pencil in the shade Nude. And I'm just going to draw my lips a little bit and color them in before I go on with the lipstick. This just helps the lipstick to last longer. That way you're not having to touch it up throughout the day. And then on top of the lip liner, I'm going to go in with the Wet n Wild lipstick in the shade Java. These Wet n Wild lipsticks are really good, so don't overlook those at the drugstore, especially if you're just starting out with makeup. They're a really good price. I'm going to take the NYX gloss in the shade Sponge Cake just to set that, and that is your completed look. I hope you guys enjoyed this easy date night look. And I hope to see you in my next video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more beauty looks. And I'll see you guys soon. Hey.